The High Court of the Federal Capital Territory on Monday refused to vacate an interim order which restrained the National Chairman of the Labour Party, Julius Aburi, the National Secretary al Haji Farouk Ibrahim, and two others from parading themselves as leaders of the party. We would analyse that today on The Breakfast. As the under-17 Africa Cup of Nations AFCON draws nearer, Golden Eagles coach Nduka Ogbari is working relentlessly with his technical team to put together a squad that will make Nigeria proud. We have a sports analyst to give us some insight on this this morning. Also, don't forget we would also be analysing the big stories on the newspapers today. Welcome to The Breakfast. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. I'll be joined later on by Kofi Battels, but right now I'd just like to say it's a pleasure having you on the show this morning. Well, uh, there are so many things that are, are coming up. We look at the social media and we see a lot of things that we, some, some of them are very heart-wrenching, some of them are gladdening, some of them are just there uh, looking at us. And in the days of social media, that is what we get. Sometimes we get the stories that look so good, but they are not true. But this one uh, is true. A black teen, Raf Yal, shot for accidentally going to the wrong house to pick up his siblings. Wrong house to pick up his siblings. And uh, this was a guy who, very young boy, who needed to pick some, uh, some of his uh, sisters from a place. And because the numbering was almost the same, and he made a mistake and went to a white neighborhood, and somebody didn't take it very well. And so he was short, and uh, it was not just a mistake. The problem was that after he was short, the person who shot him came out and then made sure that he was shot again. And that made the second time. But we're lucky, or he was lucky, that he didn't die. In fact, as we speak now, he is recuperating in his home. He has left the hospital right now, and he's feeling a little bit better. But what does that speak to us? It's an, in America that I wonder who really are the Americans and what, what level the... the um, uh, the racism is in America. It's in America that we have everybody else being labeled uh, something about where he comes from. Is In America, we see Mexican-Americans. We don't see Mexican-UK or Mexican-Europeans. It's in America, we see African-American. It's in America, in America, even the people that are indigenous Americans um, uh, are labeled also who really are the Americans and who are the owners of America that people will have this kind of behavior and it's still it's still existing in the 21st century and it's really really heartbreaking that people who have been there to build America to make it great as great as it is now just because of that color they're still being labeled as the people that should never be uh, associated with. Anytime some of the whites see the black people, what comes to their mind is criminality, it's drugs, it's armed robbery, it's uh, killings, it's a lot of other things, and they just don't want to mix with them. And some of them even feel that they are of the lower species and should never be uh, seen as um, equals. So this thing happened, and then we also have seen in a new photo that a 16-year-old Raf Yal have, has appeared to be able to sit up now on a bench. And in the photo that we have, we're seeing on the screen now, he's sitting with the attorney Lee Merritt, according to an Instagram post on Wednesday from an activist and a family spokesperson, Sean King. And they say that he's home and looks great. Raf is walking, a walking miracle with a head of steel. <laughs> okay, I like that. That's what King wrote in the post, which Merritt reposted. Had the bullet hit his head a fraction of an inch in any other direction, he would probably be dead right now. He is scheduled to be back in court on June 1. 
We do hear that uh, the shooter has turned himself in and we don't know how that is going to turn out. We've seen that there are a lot of other people who killed uh, black Africans or black Americans in, in that place and they just got a, a, a slap on the wrist. And there are people who did lower or smaller or <laughs> yeah, crimes that you would not call, you cannot put uh, in the same place with uh, others that they've done. For instance, the people that killed uh, Floyd, uh, if they were black and they did what they did, uh, I'm not sure they were going to have uh, sentencing for years. They're going to just have life imprisonment or they're going to face other things that are even worse than that. While the charges have been filed, this remains an active investigation, according to the prosecutors in a statement. And according to them, and I quote, we are continuing to work with law enforcement to gather any and all evidence available in this case. Okay, so let's see how it goes. We're hoping that the needful will be done, but it shouldn't always be that when a black is involved in any crime that is being committed, like it, the black is the victim, uh, people have to p carry placards before the law enforcement will have to do what they need to do. I mean, racism is bad enough, bad enough, but when it is so bad that it has to cost the life of another person, it's even worse. And I don't know why America that preaches um, equality, preaches uh, so many other things and to make them look good, will still have things like this happening in that climb. And funny enough, that is the place we call Sena Climbs. How sane is the Sena Climb? I really don't know. Okay, we also have another issue. The uh, Federal Executive Council has approved 1.5 trillion Naira road projects across 11 states. In uh, some papers, it is uh, in billions, but here is 1.5 trillion uh, Naira. The Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, has said over 700 kilometers of road spreading across 11 states in the country would soon be completed. He disclosed this while briefing State House correspondents on the outcome of the meeting of the Federal Executive Council, FEC, on uh, Wednesday in Abuja. The meeting was presided over by Vice President Yemio Shimbajo. Fashola said over 1.5 trillion naira would be spent on the projects by the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPC. According to him, the states where the roads are cited include Edo, Delta, Kanu, Kaduna, Bernu, and Adamawa. Also, the Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Ngige, said the Council approved the second phase of the Electronic Nigeria Social Insurance Trust Fund, which will enable concessionaries to upgrade the infrastructure at the sum of 15 billion naira. The Minister of State for Budget and National Planning, Clems Agba, said the FEC has approved the sum of 3.4 billion naira for the procurement of a surveillance aircraft for the use of the Nigerian Customs Service. And what a lot of people are just wondering is why now? Why these things are very lofty, uh, this money being voted for all these things, they are very good. But why did they not come up uh, a, few, a few weeks back, a few months back, a few years back or something? Okay, was it on the drawing board? We've seen in Nigeria that even if, uh, even if it's the same party handing over to the next, there is no guarantee that there's going to be continuity. Uh, the next government, the next administration coming in, will have a very, very neck-breaking burden in debt to pay. And now that these things are being done, did they give the incoming administration room to suggest some things, to have input in the, suggest, on the, in the decisions that they took now, because they are going to be the ones to implement. We just saw in the papers today that um, even the sub fuel subsidy re removal, uh, there's no specific date that has been set and all that. Uh, so that means that no proper plan was done before the announcement was made. So now that this money is being voted for all the things that they are going to do, how much is the budget? How is the next administration going to take it? Were they involved in the planning for all this? We, they have like a, less than 40 days to get to that uh, point where they are going to leave this administration, that is. 
Uh, so on the 29th of May, hopefully, we're going to have a new administration. And this humongous amount of money is being voted to do the projects that we do not know if they are going to come into fruition. Even the ones that were supposed to be done in, by this administration have not been completed. Uh, right now, there's still terrible traffic, for instance, because work is being done uh, on the uh, Lagos Ibadan Expressway that we were promised was going to be completed long before now. We do hope that there's not going to be friction. We do hope that there's going to be seamless transition into the next government. We do hope that the next government will do well to uh, continue with whatever plan that this administration has had. We do hope that they were carried along when they were taking all these decisions. But there's so much to talk about, especially when we get to uh, where we're going to be reviewing the n newspaper dailies for today, because there's so many things that we are going to see in the papers. So in case you didn't have the opportunity to read the papers or you're not on the social media, or which is most unlikely anyway, but we're going to have analysts that will be looking at those things critically enough to give insight to what is really happening beyond just the headlines. Once again, I'd like to say welcome to the program today. And uh, we have another story, a trending story. Uh, we're not taking a break just yet. Uh, Twitter has commenced removal of all legacy verification check marks, also referred to as badges. Recall that Elon Musk had mentioned his plan to make Twitter have a subscription-based package for users as early as during the acquisition process of the microblogging platform. As at the time of sharing this post, thousands of accounts, including that of co-founder and former CEO of Twitter, Jack Dorsey, uh, uh, have been impacted. Uh, we also have the account of somebody uh, like Philip Obin, who is the... Um, uh, special assistant to the vice president on uh, new media, uh, who has been impacted as well. Fortunately, someone like Philip Obin has what is like the nearest or the, the best, well, let it not be like I am uh, trying to um, advertise it, but we have people who have home built, home grown, if you may, uh, things that can replace Twitter. So maybe it's high time we we'll begin to look at. Uh, home solutions to uh, all the things that we need. So we have a macro uh, blogging site, which is Twitter, but we have some others in Nigeria that can also do the job of Twitter with a minimum wage of 30,000 Naira per month, approximately uh, 30, 000, oh, 100, uh, 1,000, sorry, 1,000 Naira a day. It will require six days of work to be able to afford Twitter blue subscription in Nigeria. In fact, more than or one day, uh, six days of work, because Twitter blue subscription is equivalent to one hour's work in the US and UK because of what they earn, but it's not the same thing because it's above 6,000 Naira. So if 1,000 Naira per day, that means you're eating into the seventh day to be able to subscribe to Twitter and get your uh, blue chip or something. Um, to subscribe, it costs a total of 6,342 naira, well, 6,342.02 naira per month. That is 66,302 uh, naira, 54 kobo a year. That is equivalent to $11 a month and 114 point nine nine dollars a year so nigeria's trend chart uh, dot com is about the best alternative to twitter like i said and verification of the blue tick is still 100 percent free so why not we begin to look at homegrown solutions to our problems we can also reach the world by using what nigerians are doing and let's consider um you know encouraging people who are nigerians who can do what we find outside. This should not be the case of going to France to buy pizza that can be done in Ojo Legba or to buy a car that can be done by Innocent Motors, for instance, and all that. Let's promote our own people. Well, we will just take a, a short break, and when we return, we hope to look at the headlines of our dailies and uh, see what can be said about that. Stay with us. <laughs> 